to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and I am at the Texas FFA Convention in Houston, Texas. And my guest today is Dr. Brian Reed. Uh, Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you. All right, Brian. So uh, a lot of fun at convention this year. H how you doing, man? Absolutely great. I got a new set of kids. Yeah. I've changed schools. Um, and we were in a position where... They weren't even ready to come to state convention. Mm. They haven't, that school has actually come to state convention in several years. Mm. So I've got a group of uh, mostly senior boys mm -hmm. that have never come to state convention and they're just, it's it, their first year. It's their first, first wow. and only chance. That's what, when uh, I spoke to them about mm -hmm. going and they were like, yeah, I don't know. I was like, this is probably going to be your only chance to get to go. Wow! Since it, and they were like, okay, we'll we'll How go. How are they now, doing? Are they? They are. They're thrilled. They're worn out. Absolutely. Are they amazed? It's, I can't imagine being that age coming here and just like like wide eyed. Yeah, that's exactly how they are. I told them I was like, get ready because that first session is like a rock and roll show. <laughs> and uh, and I, after I saw them after that first session, I was like, was it everything I said? And they were like, absolutely. They're like my ears are ringing. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's go back a bit here. How, how, how did you originally learn about or get, uh, get introduced to FFA? I grew up in Missouri mm. on a cattle operation. Uh, we'd be the, I would be the third generation on the same piece of property. Mm -hmm. My grandfather purchased that land. There's a piece of, of the farm that actually was purchased by my great-grandparents. Mm -hmm. um, so agriculture has been in my family for basically every generation yeah. since we came over from England. Uh, I've done a lot of genealogy research, mm -hmm. and everybody is, everybody all the way back is, has been agriculture. Wow. Um, so I'm very tied to the land. Mm -hmm. I'm very tied to um, the production side of mm -hmm. ag. I had, a, I had a good FFA experience growing up in high school and uh, just led yeah. to the Staying in agriculture, that's where I want to be. That, that's my home base. That's mm -hmm. my livelihood. Uh, it's where my heart is. Yeah. So a as faculty and just being involved with the organization as a whole, like, what what keeps you coming back? Like, what keeps that fire going? It's got to be the kids. Mm. Um, some, I, heard, I heard somebody say the other day, the kids don't change, but we get older. <laughs> and, and I think that that's true. But yet, I didn't know. I didn't think about that. You're right, especially in the if you take the convention setting specifically, because it's the same age group. Yeah. So you know, 10, 20 years that come back, they'll be the same age. Yeah. It'll be a new crop, of course. Exactly. Kids, but uh, and some of the some of the uh, the young uh, members that were maybe even on this show when they come back, you know, they're gonna be the old dogs one day. Like, man, I talked to you when I was in this that 10, 15 years ago. Absolutely. And then at that point, I'm be like, oh man, I knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and and uh, you know, but I have always said the kids, the kids keep me young. Yeah. Um, listen to their crazy teenage drama, mm. and I'm just sitting back laughing, and going, "Yeah, I did that back in the day." And I remember how dumb I felt after it was all over. Mm -hmm. it? And you know, just to to experience those teenage years, yeah. year after year, helping those kids grow, but living more or less off of their excitement mm -hmm. um that keeps me coming back i'm yeah i, I wanted to stay you know some of the kids were like when will you retire and i said probably when they hauled my dead body out of the classroom <laughs> that's what i said I, I mine was in the classroom but they're like am i ever gonna when do i i'm like when am i never gonna want to like be um energized and be able to like connect with people like i'm not if as long as my body's working i'm in you know that's absolutely right yeah that's absolutely right what's been your favorite part about convention this year like any specific moment you know well having a hurricane roll in was a new, I said new you, thing that's your favorite nah i didn't say <laughs> memorable well that's memorable <laughs> i did but i didn't say remember i said favorite no uh, memorable works too like oh Share that story. I don't know if you remember when we had a side conversation. There was another student. Oh, no, you weren't for this one. I was having a conversation with a the student. They were telling me about, like, their hotel didn't have electricity and this and that and all these other things. But you know what was interesting? Unlike myself, who would have been complaining, I'll pick on me, they were loving it. She was like, it's like camping. We were camping. It was hot. And then I finally, like, we were taking a cold shower. It was like we were, like, camping outside. Yeah. The, uh, the boys went through it all. We were in an Airbnb. Mm. And uh, 
that house didn't have electricity for two days. Oh, my God. There, there was no damage to the house, so everything was yeah. fine other than being stuffy. But, I mean, as soon as the eye had passed, they were like, can we go drive around? We want to see what's been going on. What's We want to see the damage. Yeah. And, I mean, it's like... Y'all, we live in West Texas. We've been in 100-mile-an-hour sandstorms before. Mm. And they're like, yeah, but this was a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> and the, there were trees all over the place, all kinds of things going on. I, I, Absolutely. I, like, God, God just showing his presence. Like, yeah. We make plans, but, hey, there's other ones, too. Yeah. And the, you know, and the good thing about the boys, we'd come to a spot where, you know, there'd be branches down. They'd hop out of the truck, pick it up, set it off on the wow. side. So it's amazing. amazing. Make the street passable. Yeah. So, um you know, but that's the tenacity of, you know, the Texas FFA membership mm-hmm. isn't, we don't see problems, we see challenges. Yeah. And that's a good point you make. Like, think about how, when you think about, or when I think about what FFA brings, the type of individuals, the leadership, the legacy of leadership. So, like, for example, in that particular instance, there were all senior boys, as you mentioned, that were there. But let's just say somebody saw them do that. They're picking up tree. And they're saying like, oh, this is something to do. Like we take yeah. care of things. We do this. And that that culture, it permeates. So now the younger, not that exact example, but the younger just getting involved, see what some of the older leaders are doing. And it builds and it builds. Now you go into the workforce that builds, that builds. Yes, yeah, so that's that's exactly right. We really pride ourselves on the concept of being hands on. Mm-hmm. And and there's a certain, a, certainly a major portion of of agricultural education and mm-hmm. FFA that is that. But more than that, we're problem solvers. Yeah. And the kids are, are developing solutions. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's one of the things, even in the classroom I teach, if you're going to bring me a problem, you bring me a solution. Mm. Uh, especially when we're building, you know, metal projects in the shop. Yep. And you want to come and tell me, okay, well, you know, this, this doesn't fit or, okay, well, what's your solution? Mm. Tell me what you think. How are we going to fix this mm-hmm. before I tell you, what I think, I want you to have thought about it yeah. because I don't want you to be a robot. I want you to be a thinker and, yeah. and start to figure out those problems and, and, and solve those problems on your own because sometimes that's all you're going to have is, is your own thoughts mm-hmm. and how to fix that problem. Yeah. How have you seen that um, Texas FBA people and the, and the members that go through this program, how do you think that per- that prepares them for the workforce going forward? They're really prepared. Mm-hmm. Um, I hear from former students all the time mm-hmm. um i have a young man that he's probably early 20s now yeah one of my better welders at a previous school probably the best welder at mm-hmm. that previous school and he called me one time and said doc i just wanted you to know i got this big pay raise he yeah. works in the oil field and i said well how'd you do that and he said that his boss was wanting to build something mm. and he said oh, okay how about this and he took out a piece of paper and a pencil and sketched it out mm-hmm. with measurements and everything else and his boss said how where did you learn to do that he said in my high school ag class stop yes <laughs> and right right then and there because he you know he's yeah. working in the oil field as a welder he got ten dollar an hour raise right then what that's absolutely because amazing. he had that skill mm. and uh you know you hear that I have a, a former student from early in my teaching career. Mm-hmm. He's been in Washington, D.C. He's the clerk for the uh, House Agricultural Committee mm-hmm. and has been for years. Um, tremendous individual. Did livestock judging through high school. Was was awesome in that. Got scholarships to go judge at a junior college mm-hmm. and then at senior college. Mm-hmm. Went in and won the, the uh, National Western Stock Show's livestock mm-hmm. judging contest yeah. in Denver which is probably the granddaddy of them all. Yeah. Um, and through all of those experiences, you know, then at the time, Kay Bailey Hutchison snatched him up after he graduated and hauled him to Washington, D.C., and he's been there ever since. Mm. But that all started in a high school mm. classroom. How amazing is that for you to go on and see your students go out and do great things? Like, how does that How does that feel? I've never been a, a teacher, so I don't know that. Like, how does that feel? It's one of the probably the most fulfilling things I've told it's amazing. I, I, I've stories. told young amazing. teachers before, this isn't just a job. Yeah. It's a, it's a missionary field. It's a calling. It's a calling. And um, if you don't feel that, mm-hmm. then you need to find something else to do. Yeah. Because this is not where you're meant to be. Mm-hmm. If you don't see it as a calling and find joy in mm-hmm. and every time the kid just has that aha moment, even mm-hmm. in the classroom, forget the banners. The banners are, yeah, it's the banners are icing on the cake. It's when the kids go, 
I understand. Mm, I, I it clicks and it clicks. That's what we're really here for. Yeah. Yeah, I could see it. And then for them to be so appreciative. Yes, Like, absolutely. I can think about, like, in my history, in my life, like, and some of the things I do, and I, even especially in college, like, some of the teachers that helped me out there, I was behind, and they, they drug me through college and made sure, and they made, they upskilled me, they saw I was trying, and they, they put, they invested in me, and, and, and I, and I thank them for that. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, they, uh, you know, they, they learn to give back, mm-hmm. so as much as they learn, they're like, Okay, then we need to communicate this. Yeah. You know, we now know this. We need to help others. Mm. You know, and uh, and just have for everybody to grow. Absolutely. So, well, Brian, I have to say, I really appreciate you taking some time out of like, uh, the convention to to sit down and have a chat, as always. And um, to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time with Mission Matters and you're tuning in for the first time and you haven't hit that subscribe or follow button, make sure you hit that button because this is a daily show. Each and every day we're bringing you new entrepreneurs, new executives, new visionaries, new thought leaders, and new content to help you along in your journey and hopefully to inspire you to do great things. So, um, again, hit that subscribe or that follow button. And, Brian, as always, I really appreciate it. Great catching up. Appreciate it. All right.